Happy Monday morning, everyone. Here we are starting our day off right in God's Word together with prayer. And uh, who knows what God's going to bring us this week. On uh, this path that I'm on today, we got some car noise. This isn't amazing how little you hit, pay attention to the noise of the car until you don't want to hear it. And then you're wondering how far do you have to go to get away from the car noises. Um, and this is definitely not the place to get away from car noises. Um, but we're going to do our best. And hopefully you guys can hear me. I'll try to speak up and uh, we'll do our best today. Um, today, uh, I just thought we're going to do a little revisit, as we often do, of the weekend um, and the services. And if you were not able to attend church, I hope you did do the live stream. Um, and if you don't go to Redeemer, check out the live stream. Um, this weekend, uh, the, the focus text was Romans 8.28 and then the verses around it, but especially Romans 8.28. And um, it was just kind of one of those weekends where you just have so many conversations that wrap up um, together. And before the Saturday service, I had a conversation with someone. Um, after the Saturday night service, I had a conversation with someone. Uh, doing yard work Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, I was listening to a podcast that kind of wrapped up into this. After service on Sunday, I had a conversation wrapped around this. All over the place. and and. Maybe it wasn't so much that the topic was, um, <laughs> sorry, got a little distracted here because as I'm walking along, I'm uh, talking to you and I look up and look who I see. We've got a bunch of goats just doing their job in the morning, eating from the buckthorn or whatever they're supposed to be eating, just taking care of business. <laughs> so a little company here. Well, all these conversations wrap around this theme of, um, uh, well, I guess like a few themes that kind of go hand in hand, kind of like why do good things happen to bad people? Um, how can a loving God let bad things happen? Um, you can just go on and on on that kind of theme. And we often are wondering about that as humans. We struggle with that. And, and a lot of people that, that step away from the church or, or walk away from God, are because of that they just kind of blame God and they say well why not why is it like this and and um, the answer to them is well God's not a loving God or there is no God and that is a joyous time for Satan I tell you that he's pretty excited that the, tr the trouble that he caused in the Garden of Eden and the trouble that he caused in that life has been placed squarely on the shoulders of God the only one who's actually trying to care through that situation and love that person out of that situation is being blamed for it. But our God is big enough to handle that anger. Our God is big enough to handle the struggles that we have when we give it to him. And I feel like I'm just getting into more and more traffic noise. I'm going to walk right the other way and maybe it'll get a little quieter. So our, our God is, is big enough for that. Um, so uh, when, when people are struggling with things and, and they start getting frustrated and angry with God, in my world and when I share with them and if they ask, I'm like, that's okay. Like, you can be angry with God. He's big enough to be angry with God. And if you're angry with God, that means you're probably, even if you're yelling at him and angry with him, you're at least talking to the right person. A person that has the ability to save, to give hope, to give strength. Um, if you walk away from him, what do you have? And so today... I'm going to reread the scripture that uh, Pastor Jim focused in on the sermon. And again, listen to that sermon. It was worth listening to again in this world we're often struggling with. Why do good things, why do good people have bad things happen to them? What can, why does a loving God cause bad things to happen? And, and this little secret cliff note version is he doesn't, but sin definitely does. And God is the one who walks us through it and helps us get through the sinful world until he calls us all home to heaven. Here's scripture, Romans 8, 28. And please read around it. There's so much more uh, great stuff in this chapter of Romans. Um, but the verse today, And we know, oh, I hope we know. I hope you know. I come back to this verse so many times when I'm struggling and I go, Okay, God, I know you got something going on here. I know this isn't your will. This isn't what you wanted. This isn't what I wanted. But God, you have a plan that's bigger than my circumstances. You have a plan that's bigger than my circumstances right now. And Lord, help me be um, 
patient enough to wait to see what you're going to do in this. How you are going to overcome Satan, the sinful nature in me, and the sinful nature in this world to show me what's going on. I'm continually working on knowing this passage, and I hope you will too. And we know that in all things, in all things, that's a very, very open statement, and that does not um, put any conditions on it. Now, as humans, we're often like conditioning things so that we don't have to deal with all the things, but God says, in all things. Paul here says, God, in all things. <laughs> Having such good luck. And now there it goes. All things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. God works for the good. And that is the thing is, is we often get into tough situations and we think, well, why? I don't think God is that good because why would this happen? Or um, how could a good God let this happen? But here in Romans, Paul says he for sure is working for the good of those who love him. I love him. Do you love him? Now, I'm not saying you're perfect. I'm not perfect. And, and how do we perfectly love something? Only God can do that. But do we love him? And, and we do. And that's all it takes is to know and love and obey. So this weekend, here are some stories that I was told that was uh, shared with me that I think fall into this and kind of paint a picture of what God is doing with all this. Um, one story is a friend of mine who had an opportunity to share a story and um, with a group and it was a story from her past and, and super painful and super hard and in the midst of that story when she was living it out as a child, as a youth, as a young adult, um, no one would have said anything good was happening in that story. It was absolutely dark and dismal and dreary, and there was no hope at that time. And many years later, she has an opportunity to share the story from the perspective of being claimed by God as God's child, and now looking at everything with new eyes. And, and when you're looking back at that story, it was still incredibly painful to her and other people around her incredibly painful but now they're starting to be able to see the good that was going to come out of that the work that god had for her in the future and even how some of that painful time was a was going to be worked for good in the future it's it's amazing another conversation um covid probably one of the toughest times we've had in a long time and just sharing all the amazing things that happened with getting close to family. And this is awful, awful, deadly, dangerous disease, uh, sickness, virus running th rampant throughout the world. And there was still some good involved in there as families came closer together and were able to spend time together and listen and grow. Another story. A co-worker loses a spouse, a young family with a child. What good can come of this? What good can come of this? And a person's response, all I can say is I know God has a plan. Not that it was God's will. It's not God's will for a young parent to die, leaving a, a widow and a child, an orphan, not an orphan because my parents still there, but you know what I mean? They're not, it's not God's will that that happens. But God does have a plan to work good in that for those who believe in him. Now, you say that to a person in the middle of these situations, they may want to hit you and scream at you instead of God. But God does have a good plan for all situations, for all people who believe in him, who love him. Do you love him? I love him situation of too much these days of, of sexual assault and and how can that be ever good and so many times again in the midst of that situation I wouldn't dare say God has a good plan for this to a hurting heart someone struggling with that situation in their life but even in those situations time and time again 
somehow, only God knows, but good comes out of it. And it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. God works for the good for those who love him. I love him. Do you love him? I hope you do. I hope you take the time to uh, go back and listen to the sermon um, from Pastor Jim. This is probably a topic that we could preach on. We could. Pastors could preach on once a month, once a quarter at least. Just kind of refresh it with us. Because so often we just don't. We don't hold on to it. We hear it again and again that uh, God is good and that good things can happen. Um, we hear it again and again that uh, God has a plan and that he can work good. But we're in the midst of it. It's so hard to see. And I don't blame anybody, anybody at all that's in the midst of the toughest situation in their life to have a hard time seeing how God can make good out of it. But what I can say is after seeing it happen in my life and in many others, and maybe in my line of work and in pastor's line of work, we're blessed more than other people because um, people come to us and tell us their God sightings. They tell us how God worked for good in their life and changed things. And then we get to be excited and hear that and share it with other people. And we also get to experience it more. And so it's easier for us to see in our situations. And so maybe that's part of this, this devotion here is, is if you have an experience where it was hard, evil, terrible, sinful, whether it's your sin, the sin of someone around you, or just this evil, terrible world, and it was terrible, but you saw God work good out of it, share that story with people, as many as you can comfortably. Maybe even as many as you can uncomfortably. And that's the thing, is, is I listened to a podcast, maybe this is my last story, I listened to a podcast, and it was not a Christian podcast. It was a secular podcast, a science podcast. Um, I, uh, I love science, I think there's great science out there, I think there's a lot of bad science out there. Um, but uh, so much good science and is doing some great stuff in our world. And this is brain science and, and uh, this uh, Stanford um, scientist was, was talking about how in this world we have so many good things like around us all the time, like from good food to social media, you know, all these things that we just love to soak in. And so addictions are rampant. And basically what addictions are are us feeding our pleasure sensors of our brain with as much as we can, whatever gets it going. And there's always something new to get it going. And we just feed that pleasure center, feed that pleasure center. But in our brain, pleasure and pain are in the same area. And so if we feed and feed the pleasure center, our brain needs to uh, kind of hit homeostasis, this equilibrium type thing. And so it will, it will feed the pain center so that um, it, it kind of comes down. So it's not always on this euphoric, Kind of high because it's just not sustainable it's not healthy for us and it seems kind of weird but we need that pain to balance us out and so our bodies will feed that pain center and so if you just keep feeding whatever addiction may be whether it's drugs sex, alcohol um, social media food gossip exercise anything that you use as your drug of choice your addiction of choice your pleasure giver of choice your body will then feed itself some pain and so a lot of people that just keep feeding that, you know, scrolling that Facebook, scrolling that Facebook to get that extra high, to see that next thing that they want to see, pretty soon they find that what they're experiencing more and more of it is anxiety and depression. So just pleasure for the sake of pleasure actually leads to pain. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing way God created us so that so that we can balance our lives out and we can understand that he had built us specifically so that when pain comes because that's what happens on the other side we struggle with pain like i don't have to i'm not talking about torture or anything i'm talking about if you actually have to do a hard day's work to get that reward instead of just scrolling and getting that reward over and over again without doing anything for it if you have to wait for it anticipate it um hold it off you deny yourself for a little bit it's just that much more balanced and, and helpful when you receive that reward. 
but it would stand to reason that when we go through the hardest times of our life, God has built into our very souls, our very bodies, our very brains, the ability to get through that, the ability for our body to actually be blessed and cared for in a physical way while he cares for us in a spiritual way. He has surrounded us in all ways to care for us in the midst of pain. And when we try to completely avoid pain, um, we realize that, that our, our brain kind of says, hold on, that's not sustainable, it's not real life. And it's not gonna get you ready for when the pain comes because this life has pain. Scripture says that too. Now I'm not here to say, seek out pain and hurt yourself in that. That's absolutely not what I'm saying. I'm just saying God is with you in all of it. And he works for the good of those who love him. I love him, do you love him? When pain comes, God's got you taken care of. And even when you can't see that he loves you, he's working for the good, scream at him and talk to him about it because he's big enough for that. In the good times, just remember, thank God because bad times do come and they will come. And in this world, they, they're kind of supposed to come. But who has overcome the world? That's right, our God as we stay close to him. It's a big topic. And like I said, we should the pastors could probably preach on this every every month, every quarter, or however that worked, just to kind of keep unpacking it and reminding us, because we need to remember again, like Rochester Sermon this year, say it again. God works for the good for those who believe in him, for love him. And you know that happens in all things, Romans 8.28 says. God is in all things. He's working for our good. For those who love him. Do you love him? I love him. Go ahead and say it out loud and say, I love him. I love him. And I will see the good that he does in my life. And I pray that you do. Some awesome things. As we're talking about this, I'll just stop here real quick because as I'm walking along, and maybe you know where I'm at um, from this bench, maybe you recognize this bench. Uh, if you look at that, and I always forget if it actually shows up backwards in a selfie camera or not, or if that kind of gets corrected, so maybe you can read that. But it's uh, Conrad F. Fingerson, in loving memory, 1939 to 2021. Death is uh, never a fun thing. Always painful, and should be painful. I love it when families, when people find ways to take death and make something good come out of it, like a, a bench to rest on, small way. God takes death and makes something awesome come out of it. Eternal life, life forever. And some way in the next world, um, it sure seems like we won't have to balance pain and pleasure, but we'll be in perfect contentment, peace, and exhilaration. Um, that lasts forever and is sustainable. In this world, the pain is married to the pleasure. There is no difference. It's going to both come. But in the next world, it's going to look a lot different. Uh, and God is going to get us through this world. And he works for the good for those who love him. Do you love him? I love him. And let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, we so thank you for all that you do for us. Uh, Lord, for the good and the bad, through the good and the bad, in all things, you work for our good. Lord, we thank you for that. And we believe it right now. It's hard to believe it in the midst of these awful times in life. The loss of a spouse, that something awful happening to us or our loved ones. Um, unforgivable things happening, Lord. And you ask us to forgive as you forgave, as you died on that cross for us. Lord Jesus, we are weak humans and we are learning day by day. Keep building us up, Lord. Keep helping us and teaching us. And Lord, um, in that last day when you bring us to heaven, may it be perfected in us. But each day, Lord, help us to know that we love you and you love us and you are working for our good. Help us to accept that, to share it, and to bring hope into this world as you brought hope into our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Ah, yes. And uh, another story just dawned on me story after story this weekend of people seeing God's good work in bad times in their lives. 
Um, I could go on and on. We're almost at 20 minutes. We're going to pass 20 minutes today. So I'll let you go. Have a wonderful week in those bad times this week or the bad times that are coming over from last week or last month, last year. Um, God loves you. And he's working for your good. If you're not ready to hear that, I'm sorry. But start hearing it because he does love you and good stuff is going to happen. It's not maybe going to be the way you want it to. Remember that. I've said that many times. Good in God's world does not mean good in our world all the time. But it's going to be better than the good that we can think of. So don't wait for the good that you're expecting. Wait for the good that God is giving you. And uh, um, if you're having a good week, enjoy that week too because our God is good and he loves you. I love God. Do you love God? Let's love him together. Have a good week. See you next Monday.